many things can overflow. But do you know what can't overflow? Constants in Go. Hi, I'm Jonathan Hall, and today I'm going to talk about constants in Go, and particularly the fact that they can't overflow and what this actually means to you. This is a topic that I think many people find to be confusing because it's a little bit counterintuitive, and I see it come up on Stack Overflow all the time. Now, I first wrote about this topic on my daily mailing list. If you enjoy this video, you will enjoy my daily mailing list too, Boldly Go Daily. You can sign up at boldlygo.tech slash daily. Every day I'll send out an email talking about Go. And again, this is a topic that I talked about on the mailing list, so check it out. So before I dive into how constants don't overflow, let's just do a really quick refresher about what constants are in Go. So here on the screen, you can see an example constant uh, in the Go Playground. I've created a constant called world that equals these two characters that I don't know how to pronounce. Uh, and then we can reference those as though they're a variable. And when we execute the program, we see the output says hello, and then those two characters. So that's how a constant works. Uh, constant is a compile time concept. It's not a runtime concept, uh, which is actually why they're not allowed to overflow, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Now, constants can be of different types. You can have string constants, as you see here. You can have numeric constants, and you can have Boolean constants. Now, when I say that constants don't overflow in Go, I'm specifically talking about numeric constants because that's where the concept of overflow might make sense. Strings can't overflow and Booleans can't overflow, but numbers can overflow. So let me show you an overflow first, and then we'll get back to the constants idea. Now here I've created a simple variable called x that is of type int and contains the value one, two, three. And I print that out all as well. But as you probably know, numeric types in Go, and really most languages, have a limited capacity. And if we go beyond that capacity, we get what's called an overflow. So let's try to trigger an overflow by setting x to be something greater than what an int can hold. Easy way to do that is just add a whole bunch of zeros. Now let's run this. So when I execute this code, I get an error. Cannot convert 123000 blah 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 to type int. Effectively, the value I'm trying to assign to the variable x of type int overflows the, the capacity of that variable, so I get this error. In some languages, you get what's actually called an overflow in the sense that it doesn't cause an error, but rather it kind of wraps around the value, the, the binary digits. Go prevents that from happening at least, so you get this error rather than a silent overflow that could lead to unexpected errors or unexpected behavior. But the interesting thing here uh, is that you can't have this problem happen with a constant only with variables in Go. So let me show you what I mean by that. So here I've changed x from being a variable of type int to being an untyped constant. Let's see what happens. So we still get an error, but notice the error is on a different line. Now the error happens on line nine, where we're trying to print x. And here it's trying to convert x into an int value. So the, the important thing here is that the constant does not overflow. I can demonstrate this more clearly by assigning it to a, another constant. So now you can see the error we receive, which is on line 10, corresponds to the constant y. There is no error regarding constant x. That's because constants don't overflow and go. I can add as many zeros or nines or any other digits I want to this thing, and it will not overflow. Now you might think, okay, yeah, but there's a limit somewhere. I can't add you know, a billion digits. It would overflow eventually, right? No, it will not overflow. If it does, that's considered a bug in the implementation of Go. How do I know this? Well, let's look at the Go spec. That's where the authoritative answer is found. So here in the section of the Go spec about constants, we have one sentence in particular that's very interesting. Numeric constants represent exact values of arbitrary precision and do not overflow. So by definition, a constant in Go will not overflow. Any overflow error you see in Go 
is not a constant. It can be the result of assigning a constant to a variable that is too big for that variable. That will cause an overflow, but the constant itself will not overflow. Let's talk about a common use case where I see this tripping people up. Where this most frequently trips people up is when they're trying to use floating point constants and they discover that there's a loss of precision. Now we know that floating point values in Go and in most languages are imprecise, especially beyond certain ranges, and that's because of the way floating point values are stored in memory. But this can be really confusing when you're dealing with constants. So let's look at an example of this. So here's an example where this can actually matter. Uh, of course, this is a contrived example, but you'll hopefully get the idea. Because constants don't overflow, they can contain values that are much greater than can be stored in a variable. So here I've set constant x to be the value math.maxfloat64 times 2. So it's double the value that can be stored in a floating point variable. Let me demonstrate that this does indeed overflow. So here we have a similar error that we cannot use x, which is an untyped float constant, as a float64, which is the default value it gets coerced into when sent to the, as an argument to printf because it overflows. However, I can still use this constant value to do something else. So let's say I want to assign it to a variable called y. Let's say x and divide by 10. Now it works again. Uh, now I can print that y value because the y value does not overflow the value that can be stored in a float 64, even though x, which is derived from, does. Essentially, the compiler does some of this math for you at compile time to allow you to sort of work around some of the type constraints uh, on variable types. Now, there's one little caveat about this in the Go spec. I said that constants do not overflow, and that's true by definition. However, look at this paragraph here. Implementation restriction. Although numeric constants have arbitrary precision in the language, a compiler may implement them using an internal representation with limited precision. That said, every implementation must represent integer constants with at least 256 bits, represent floating point constants, including the parts of complex constant with a uh, mantissa of at least 256 bits and assigned binary ex exponent of at least 16 bits. It should give an error if unable to represent an integer constant precisely and give an error if unable to represent a floating point or complex constant due to overflow. And round to the nearest representable constant if unable to represent a floating point or complex constant due to limits on precision. So there, uh, there are some cases for really, really large uh, bit values of constants where you might get a compile time error or uh, where you might round a floating point or a complex type to only 256 bits of precision. I think we can mostly agree that 256 bits is enough for anybody. Uh, that should practically never matter, unless maybe you're doing some very uh, precise scientific calculations. Uh, but there you have it. That's how constants work in Go and why they don't overflow. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. I hope you'll also subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified whenever my new videos come out. And until then, I hope you'll have a lot of fun with your new found knowledge of Go constants. Make it go.